Hello again, people. Welcome back to HemingwayLand.com, your source for quality, affordable land in the state of New Mexico. Got a property today that I think is an ideal sort of camping, hunting, uh, maybe even fishing, recreation type property. Obviously, you can build on this. You could build a house. You could build a summer cabin. You could build a place to retire. But I think for those of you who come to the website and who watch these videos looking for good sort of hunting property, a uh, place to build maybe even like a hunting cabin, a place where you and the friends can can go on weekends or go for a week, get away from the family. Uh, I think this one is going to be ideal. I think you're going to be interested in this. So let's get to it. This is reference number MKNM1544, located up in the northwest part of New Mexico in McKinley County. It is 4.2 acres in the Box S Ranch subdivision. That's Box S. Careful with the pronunciation. And it is priced affordably at $9,500. Um, let's go back down, pull this up on a map. As with all of our listings, and I know I do way too much scrolling in these videos, as with all of our listings, come here, click the GPS coordinates, it'll bring it up on the Google Maps. So, this is the property right here. If I go to map view, you are not going to see an outline of the land, so I'm just going to say that it is a triangular, largely triangular shaped lot that is sandwiched between Box S Ranch Road and this unnamed road right here. So, all of this land that you're seeing is basically the property, this little island unto itself. Don't believe me, come down to the photo gallery here, guys. We have the Google Earth representation of the size, shape, location of the land, and we also have, because I know you guys are going to ask me for this, a copy of the plat map, which reiterates, again, the size, shape, location of this. So 4.245 acres right out here, right at the corner of these two roads. Let's go back here for a second. So before we get into property specifics, let's talk about where this is within McKinley County and to do that best, we'll go to this map view and we'll zoom back a little bit here. So you've got Rama over here in nearby Cibola County. Uh, this is going to be the nearest town to the property. Basically, once you're on the 150, excuse me, once you're on the 53, uh, you're shooting off the 157 and coming up this way through here. This property sits just north of Timberlake Ranch. If I zoom in enough, you'll see it. Timberlake Ranch. Uh, we've listed property out here in Timberlake Ranch. This box S uh, subdivision I thought was part of Timberlake. Turns out it's not, but you do have to drive through Timberlake to get to it. Uh, that being said, it should be noted that a lot of the covenants and restrictions that govern Timberlake do not govern this property. So if you have been looking at one of those properties uh, that we have out there and you thought that perhaps there's a few too many rules, um, they're not uh, as onerous up here, though I will get to that later in the video. Whatever the case, you're driving past the Rama airstrip over here and the Rama Lake to get out to the property. It should be noted, by the way, that this property sits, right click, measure distance, roughly about seven miles from Rama Lake. So that's another one of these pieces of you know, recreation that you're going to have easy access to as far as fishing, boating, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you zoom back a little bit here, you'll see that the 53, Zoom back a lot. The 53 snakes around and comes up here to the 40. Uh, so the nearest town uh, closest to this property is the town of Rama. This is where you would go for some quick uh, grocery and supply runs. Additionally, there's schools out here, there's churches, etc. But if you want something a little bit bigger, um, as far as uh, towns go, uh, the nearest one would be right here. This Grants, Milan, San Rafael area. That's where you're going to find your nearby Walmart, things like that. Uh, it should also be noted that uh, this property up here, you're going to have uh, pretty good access not only to Rama Lake, but also to the Blue Water uh, Lake State Park. Um, obviously, it's not it's not a quick drive. You're going to have to go all the way around it to get out there, but it is close by. And then, guys, you have this giant chunk of green, uh, which this property sits uh, as part of. This is the Cibola National Forest. So obviously, there's going to be a good deal of, of hunting, uh, camping, trails, hiking uh, type opportunities that you have out there. Uh, this area, of course, is uh, there's a great deal of um, elk, mule deer, wild turkey, and I'm sure other things. But the point is, up here in the northwest part of the state, McKinley and Cibola counties, the uh, the deer outnumber the people. Uh, fortunately, you can shoot at them; they can't shoot at you. So there you go. So if you're a hunter, this is a good place to go. Anyway, let's zoom back in. All right, guys. Uh, so as noted, power to this property. Nearest power is right here along Box S Ranch Road. It is servicing this house over here. Uh, there's also power at this nearby property. This is not the adjacent lot. It looks like it is. It's not. But point is, both very close to the subject property, likely not difficult to get power. 
uh, extended out there should you choose to build on this land. Uh, additionally, you've got some homes over here. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see this better. You've got some homes over here, some people living out here. So obviously power out in these regions as well. Point being, power is service in the area, and it is very close here along this road. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here on uh, the map. I'm going to hold down the control key, and I'm going to drag the map a little bit just to kind of show you guys that this uh, property itself sits on a bit of a hillside here. You've got a slope to this land. So this road up here is at a higher elevation than this road. Uh, point being, if you do come out here and you want to build on this property, you know, just uh, just be aware that not only is it forested, but it's on a bit of a slope, and so you've got that incline to deal with. Uh, so some landscaping issues, some probably, I don't know, deforesting issues, things to uh, concern yourself with. But if you come down here to the photo gallery, let's just go through these photos. Um, not these. Hang on. Here we go. All right. So this is the property right here, as noted. Uh, looking at it, I believe, from the east. Uh, this, of course, are the drone shots of the property. I'll get back to this a little bit later in the video, but this obviously is the entrance to this area. This gives you a good sense of what the roads are like out here. Obviously, easy to navigate. This is the nearby power on the adjacent property. And uh, this is the road right here leading out to this, the subject property. I think if we go one back, you will see this is where the uh, the tippy top of that triangle sort of hits. And this gives you a sense of exactly what the incline of this property is like. Now, if you go through these photos, what you're going to see is, of course, it's a, it's a densely forested area, but there are wide open spaces like this on which you could theoretically build and have, you know, I guess less difficulty than one with trees sticking out of it that you'd have to knock down first. Uh, additionally, if you go through this, you're going to see that there's already a fire pit set up out here. Obviously, the previous owners or somebody uh, has been camping out here, camps out here a good deal. Uh, so that's already set up for you, all part of the $9,500 deal here, guys. Uh, additionally, if you scroll through this, you'll get a pretty good sense of uh, exactly how you know pretty this area is out here, what the trees are like, as so far as the foresting situation. And then, of course, this is the road up here on the uh, higher end of the property. So one of the nice things... Um, you know, with building on, on land like this, it's always a little harder, uh, but one of the nice things about it is the views that it's going to provide you. I should just let you guys know that this is, these are the types of, you know, rock formations that surround this area. So this is what you're going to be looking at. Additionally, uh, something like this, this is what's surrounding this region, uh, these red sandstone cliffs, and here's a shot of them in better light. This, of course, is very close to the property. I also want to point out, uh, this guy showed up while our photographer was out there. So obviously the wildlife is uh, very friendly in this region. They come pretty close. By the way, I am not a hunter. I know nothing about animals, but what is this? Is this like the equivalent of a unibrow? I don't know. But leave a, if you're a hunter, if you actually know the answer to this, leave a comment here on the YouTube channel. Let me know what this is because it looks, looks a little weird. Anyway, uh, point being, that's a good uh, idea of what the area is like. I'm going to encourage you guys to go through this photo gallery on your own. Additionally, we're going to have a drone video down here at the bottom of the page. Uh, that I encourage you to view. It's going to give you an excellent sense of the property, the terrain, the surroundings, etc. Anywho, with all that said, let's go back up here and talk about some other things. First of all, I just want to note that uh, some things that I just discussed, such as uh, nearby points of interest, such as the Rama Lake area, if you click this link, it's going to take you to their website, um, as well as the Cibola National Forest website. We don't have it on this listing page right now. We're going to have it by the time it's, this goes live. But if you want to learn more about the hunting that's, uh, that's available out there, the hunting opportunities, hiking trails, etc., cetera, um, also they have things down here. They help you to be bear aware, bear aware. Uh, point being, you can learn much more about Cibola National Forest and all the opportunity that awaits out there for you uh, by visiting these websites, by clicking these links right here on the table. So these are all the sort of nearby points of interest. Uh, additionally, let's also, I just want to mention, if you do, if you are eyeballing this property as a potential, hey, I want to come out here and build, let me do some research on this, Continental Divide Electric Co-op Co uh, is the local utility out there that services that region. If you want to contact them and try to get a practical sense of what is it going to cost for me to get power onto this property, uh, they can speak to you about that. They can give you a sense of cost. Um, additionally, by the way, when you have that conversation, you're usually calling them. They're going to ask you for a physical address. Of course, this is vacant land, so it doesn't have that. So you're going to say, well, it's in the Boxes Ranch subdivision. Probably if you tell them the, you know, the roads that it's on, they'll be able to figure it out. But uh, they might ask for a property ID. They might ask for a legal description. This is the information they might be asking for if you're having those discussions. So just an FYI, if you do want to do a little digging, a little research into what's going to cost for me to get power out there on the property. Now, 
With all this said, uh, here's some helpful uh, things to, to help you with research. In regards to Wells, uh, Office of the State Engineer is going to be the best place to look for that. That being said, up here in this Timberlake area, in this Box S area, you've got a lot of people who have wells going to their properties. So that tells me that the water table depth is, is easily accessible out there. Uh, but of course, as part of your research, call local vendors in that area. You know, get a sense of exactly how deep it is, what it costs to put a well out there. All right. Now, with all that said, let's get into my favorite topic, zoning. Here we go. So McKinley County has no formal zoning designation for much of the residential land uh, in its area. In, in essence, they defer to whatever the covenants or restrictions of the given subdivision within that region are, uh, and they let those you know, HOAs, homeowners associations, property owners associations, sort of dictate their own what you can and cannot do or build on the land. Um, <clears throat> so Box S Ranch, as I've begun doing now on these listing pages, we do a cliff notes of the covenants and restrictions that govern a region. Uh, of course, we have these linked here in the table. We also have them down here under the POA, Property Owner Association, Covenants and Restrictions. Click here and it'll bring up this document, which you can read through if you like. It's 12 pages. It's not incredibly dense, but it's, you know, it's a bit much. It's a lot of legal jargon which may not be fun to read. Or you can come back here to the Hemingway Land website where we've simplified this. Look at this guy, simplified this and broken it down to a Cliff Notes version. So quick thing, I have done a little bit of digging on this. Uh, these were written back in 1984, not a million years ago like some of these CCRs you find. Um, that being said, it looks like whatever homeowners association was intended to govern this region to, to you know be following these rules and whatnot and enforcing them. Uh, does not exist. So the thing about covenants, the thing about these, these CCRs, these restrictions, they go with the land, quote unquote. They go with the land. Um, you know, that being said, is anyone really aware of them? Is anyone trying to enforce them? Uh, we have property out in Timberlake Ranch. There they have an HOA, a very active HOA, where they are aware of the rules and they are enforcing them. This one, however, from the research that I have done, talking to realtors in the area, uh, talking to different, you know, authoritative sources. Uh, th there's no HOA out there. There's nobody really enforcing these things. Now, of course, if you go out there and you do something bonkers, if you do something that's, you know, specifically outlined in these covenants, don't do this, you can't do this on this land, don't be surprised if there is somebody who wants to try and enforce Some Don't be surprised if there is some local who is aware of these rules and wants to try to enforce this. And, you know, they may have the option to take you to court on it. Uh, that being said, I don't think that these are too onerous. Uh, and I also think that if you deviate from them slightly, no one's going to say anything. So all that being said, I encourage you guys to read these. Uh, this is, let's just go through these quickly. Residential good, commercial bad. Uh, the land can only be used for uh, residential purposes, um, not for a business, etc. As far as livestock, they have these rules about, you know, dogs and cats and birds and chickens are okay, but uh, uh, horses and cows uh, only in small amounts, four, uh, four of each per property. Uh, if you want to have a lot of livestock, you can't. So, but my suspicion is if you own a lot of livestock and you're looking for a property for them, you're not looking at this one. Uh, time limit to build uh, from the time that you buy the property, no one, no one is is clocking you on this. No one's got a stopwatch out uh, to see how long it takes you. That being said, uh, they do say once you break ground, once you begin construction, you have 18 months to complete it. As they say in the covenants, quote unquote, diligently prosecuted. Construction should be diligently prosecuted. Now again, who's enforcing that? And what is the, uh, you know, what are the ramifications of taking 19 months to build something or 20 months? Does anybody say anything? Does it, I mean, you know, what is it? Is it a fine or is it a, a stern talking to? I don't know. Quick thing though, if you come back here to, uh, to Google Maps and you look at this, hang on, let me reset this. If you look at some of the neighbors out here, it looks like I'm seeing some trash out here. It looks like I'm seeing some cars that are parked out here. I can't believe there's anybody enforcing these covenants. I can't, I, there's certainly no active HOA, but I can't believe there's anybody really abiding by the letter of the law of these covenants. So, you know, it's just something to keep in mind. You know, if you're buying this property, this is essentially what you're agreeing to because it's a rule that runs with the land. Construction diligently prosecuted, quote unquote. But again, who's enforcing that? I don't know. Uh, a lot of times when we read covenants for properties, they come with some sort of architectural design committee, control committee, who have sway over what gets built or how it gets built. A lot of times that's really um, just sort of a protective measure to to ensure, you know, the people who do build out there that they're that they're 
home values remain, you know, I don't know, even or go up. Uh, so as people aren't building giant eyesores on the land or parking a bunch of cars, let's say. Uh, this one, however, these CCRs do not have any mention of an architectural control committee, any sort of design elements. They ask that roofs be fire resistant since you're right next to a whole bunch of trees. That one seems, you know, obvious. Seems like something you would do anyway. Uh, but the point is, in these covenants, in these restrictions, there is no mention of this. This does not exist. So if you, for instance, if you're looking at our Timberlake properties and, you know, that was a turnoff for you and you're saying, I don't, I don't want anybody to tell me what I can build on my land. Um, there's nobody who's going to tell you what you can build on this land. Uh, so that's not even enumerated in there. Camping uh, allowed, but for no longer than 21 days at a time. And the owner must always be present. Who's enforcing that? Again, I don't know, but it's, you know, goes with the land, quote unquote. Uh, no, port no porta potties unless you're building, uh, you know, rubbish. Don't be a jerk and leave your trash around. That one's obvious. Storage. Uh, lots may not be used exclusively for storage, like for a bunch of cars. And um, firearms, not allowed to discharge, uh, so hunting not permitted within the bounds of Box S Ranch, but of course, Cibola National Forest is very close by, so you know, you've got a, just a you know, quick drive over to, uh, to that region where you can use firearms. Uh, not mentioned in the CCRs, just want to point this out. So uh, if you are apprehensive about these things, here's something that's not even enumerated in the CCRs. Number one, minimum square footage, uh, having to do with if you want to build a tiny home out there, uh, you're probably going to be able to do it. Uh, you know, nobody can call you on that one. Uh, additionally, if you build something really nice out there and you want to Airbnb it out uh, as some sort of, you know, rustic retreat, camping retreat, hunting retreat, uh, you are going to have the ability to do that. Obviously, the covenants predate uh, Airbnb, but they really make no mention of that. Maybe, maybe the the first covenant, the first uh, a rule about uh, being used for residential and not for business purposes. Perhaps someone could construe it that way. Whatever the case, all things to be aware of. If you want to dig a little bit deeper into those, again, you could click either one of the links we have set up on the website here to review these uh, on your own. Uh, it is something you should at the very least acquaint yourself with besides my Cliff Notes version if you are interested in this property. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, all right, guys. So quick thing, uh, in regards to purchasing the property, we have closed on this through Four Corners Title. We've gotten title insurance on this, so we will be conveying it to you with a warranty deed. Uh, I will just have you guys know, we, uh, as usual, this is one of these where we're, we're hoping for a cash sale. We've got a, an earnest money deposit of $500 here. Uh, if you do want to talk financing, I'm open to it on this one, but I'm, I'm going to be looking for a you know, substantial down payment, at least 50%, or maybe I shouldn't say at least 50%, but $4,500, something like that would be ideal. Uh, but anything north of $3,000 would be acceptable. So if you do want to talk about owner finance and about having monthly payment, um, down payment, monthly payment, give us a call. 702-919-7170, and we'll discuss that. But, hey guys, if you want to buy this one for cash, here's what you do. Click the Buy Now button. It's going to bring up this uh, handy checkout right here. Secure checkout, uh, we're going to ask you a couple questions on this page, or on the next page, we'll ask for credit card information. Uh, the $500 is an earnest money deposit. I don't anticipate most people are going to want to give me $9,500 on a credit card. Or if they do, they probably have to spread it out over two cards. So you put down $500, then we'll get in touch with you pretty soon pretty quickly and uh, you know we'll, we'll speak about where you want to go from there if you do want to spread it out over credit cards or as we would suggest close through title and escrow close through four corners title uh, so you too can get title insurance on the property additionally it, it, it is the benefit for you the buyer is that we can't touch your money until the property has been recorded into your name uh, if you come up here on the listing page uh, how it works buying from us click on this it'll take you here you can read how either one of these transactions would, would, would occur if you want to pay for it with a credit card, basically this type of close, or if you want to close through title escrow company, this is what we would do. And in case you're saying to yourself, hey, I'm not going to give somebody money without seeing the contract I'm going to have to sign. Well, look at this. Helpfully, we have it linked right here. Click on that, and it'll bring up one of our standard sale purchase agreements. These are very simple, one page, one page for signatures, whatever the case uh, we don't uh, we don't open escrow on properties unless somebody puts up money and shows that they're serious. And title companies don't do anything unless they have a contract demonstrating intent from buyer and seller. So you put down the money, we write up one of these, we submit it to Four Corners Title, and they will do the rest. Four Corners, by the way, to my knowledge, is the only title company in this county, which is why I keep mentioning it. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I uh, hope that was informative. Once again, guys, down at the bottom of the page, we're going to have the drone video set up, and uh, I am willing to entertain a financing option on this one with some sort of you know, deposit, 3000 3500 ideally 4500 down. 
blah, blah, blah. Anyway, all right, everybody, thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.